Oh my gosh, that's so close up. Hey friends! Firstly, let's address the elephant in the room. My camera quality. I'm filming this on my mobile phone. My dog ate the memory card to my normal camera and I am too broke to replace it. <laughs> uh, the second thing you're going to notice is that this is a video completely devoid of any colour. I have mostly moved out of my house by now. All of my stuff is in one room. I've just got my bed, which I'm sitting on. Uh, I don't even have my tripod. I don't have a, a tripod that fits my phone anyway. So right now my phone is balanced preca pre pre precariously in uh, a slat window, hoping to God it doesn't fall to its death. Um, but I already missed one video this month because I was super unwell and just couldn't do it. And I didn't want to miss another one, so in exchange for getting my face on your screen, you get it in really terrible quality. Uh, apparently my phone's actually filming in 4K right now, but like in the scheme of higher definition to standard definition, this is crap definition. <laughs> focus the camera for my intro. So one of the things that most of the people who know me don't necessarily know about me is that all of my friends live in the internet. I mean they have homes, presumably they have Wi-Fi access in those homes and they also have lives and families and pets but to me they live in the internet. I watch their lives play out on this tiny little illuminated screen and I love them all to death. Uh, once upon a time I was a wee little youngin Oh, that was a terrible accent. That wasn't even an accent. Uh, who was... I spent mostly, probably... Moving brain. I spent like 99.99% of my time just mucking around on the internet. We had a dodgy as computer and dial-up internet, and the noise from the dial-up internet still haunts me to this day. I mean, I was properly addicted to the internet, but... There was nothing else to do in my small town, and I had very, very few friends. So it was basically the only thing to do. Ooh, I'm making shadow puppets on my face. I know that having friends on the internet has a bad rap, and I know why it has that rap, and I respect that. But to me, having online friends has changed my life. And it's supported me through some really major turmoils that I've experienced and given me some of the best and most understanding supportive friends that I could ever even hope to ask for. Um, I guess to understand this a bit better you've got to know that my love of online community started when I was 11 right after my dad died. To put it in a short way I started watching the TV show Supernatural and from there I found an online message board it was like an envision free pro board. Okay, nobody's gonna know what you're talking about. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep going with the video. At this point in my life, everyone I knew knew about my father dying, but I didn't know anyone who also had been through that experience. And since it was such a big part of who I was, I sort of felt this wall between me and other people where I couldn't really connect with people because I didn't have that in common with them. And I just felt like there was no way that I could make new friends or really identify with anyone. I mean, also, in addition to that, there was no way of making new friends because I lived in the tiniest little town in all of Australia. Well, probably not, <laughs> but it felt that way. But even just like for a few hours a day after school, coming home and talking to the people on the internet, it really helped me break down that wall because... They didn't necessarily have to know my past, but we also all got together over this really big shared love of something, which I didn't have in common with anyone else I knew. I also really found it pretty... F what am I doing with my neck? What? I also really had at that point experience what it was like to have like a group of friends where nobody bullied me because of like my appearance or whatever it is that kids pick on you for and it was awesome to be able to sit down wearing whatever I want, looking however I wanted and talk to people whenever I wanted in a really supportive environment where all they really did was back you up and build you up without people picking on me. 
I mean, it was just like an overwhelmingly positive experience in my life, and I don't think I would have gotten through my dad's death like half as well as I did without these strangers on the internet. later in high school I kind of still had this really big I keep looking down sorry my laptop is down here and I can see my face on it and I'm like a magpie I just can't no but it's cockatiels that can't stop looking at their reflection in the mirror isn't it or budgies or something I'm one of those but anyway a few years later in high school I still had this really huge like burden of like anxiety and depression going on and I still had this wall when it came to people I knew face to face where I felt like we didn't have the same experiences and I'd had such a traumatic experience and was experiencing depression that I couldn't bond with them over the things that people normally bonded over because that wasn't a part of who I was all this other genuinely not very nice stuff was a big part of who I was at that point. Uh, about halfway through high school, I changed to a different school. And this school was amazing, and I loved it. And I had a group of friends there that is kind of like the group of friends that everyone wants to have in high school, or wishes they could have had in high school. Like the ones that you kind of see in like teenage TV dramas, and you're like, oh, Nobody has those kinds of friends. Well, I had those kinds of friends. But this school that I'd finally found a place like where I belonged. And it was amazing. And I still felt really kind of insecure. And I still felt like there was a boundary there between me and other people. But I was kind of starting to let it go. This school was about an hour and a half from my house. So I was travelling for three hours a day. And on top of that, travelling for three hours a day, starting school at 8am and finishing school at 5pm, I was expected to do about three hours of homework. And it basically just deteriorated my mental health until I couldn't cope anymore. And I was also starting to get my first signs of endometriosis. I'd already started to get endometriosis, but my first really bad signs of endometriosis and interstitial cystitis. So I was... It was making me sick. For a couple of years at that point, one of my favourite bands uh, had been My Chemical Romance. I was part of the MC Army. I still am, everyone, even though My Chemical Romance never died. Uh, the same year I dropped out of high school, because of all those reasons, the band basically was releasing a new album, and they dropped this big, like, media hype slash... I don't even know. Whatever. <laughs> it was just this big craziness before the album was announced. Where they were basically giving out these really cryptic clues and all the fans were getting together on fan pages to solve the clues and try and figure out what the album was going to be about. And it was just this awesome, awesome um, way to basically spend the time that I had at home. But through that I made all these really beautiful friends who just helped me get through this really tough spot where I was forced to leave somewhere where I belonged, which was my high school, um, and go on to something that I didn't necessarily want to do, which was leaving high school. <laughs> and they also gave me a place where I felt like I belonged and could talk about whatever I wanted. That for real made me tear up a little bit. And because we were like bonding over our love of something, it became so much bigger than the problems that I was having in other parts of my life. So I could just, in our friendships, focus on like what we had bonded over. And it was just this awesome way of breaking down that wall again. I mean, to put it in perspective, it's been like six years now since that happened. And I still talk to the friends I made on there pretty much almost every day. And we still build each other up and we comment on each other's selfies and we chat and we send each other things in the mail and we still have this really beautiful friendship. And I never would have had that without online communities. I would know when it came to chronic illness it was pretty much the same story again. Another big turmoil in my life, another major changing point. At first I came back to the online communities for answers like what was endometriosis, how do you treat it, what are the symptoms? 
and what works and what doesn't work, but then it kind of transformed into making friends with people who had the same illness as me or similar illnesses and bonding over that and being able to answer and ask questions that were probably too much information for um, friends that didn't have the illness or weren't used to talking about it. But by then it was becoming obvious to me in like my real life that just like with my dad, I, the people I knew weren't or hadn't gone through what I was going through and it put this big wall up that was only smashed down when I bonded with people who were going through what I was going through because again it became this huge part of my identity and it still is and when something is a really big part of your identity and it's not a big part of anybody else's identity around you and it leaves not much room for anything else in your identity because it takes all of your hobbies and it takes all of your pastimes and it takes all of your interests away when you can't do them because you're sick then it leaves you not a lot really to bond over with other people who don't have it. So basically one day I had this idea and I posted it on one of the Facebook groups that I was part of and I said hey does anyone want to start a YouTube channel where we talk about different chronic illnesses and how to cope with them and just... And it turns out there was another amazing person who'd had a really similar idea to me and she saw my post. Thank goodness. If you can't tell, I'm talking about Victoria. This beautiful person is one of my very best friends and a really huge part of my life. And again, it never would have happened had I not invested in online communities and online friends. I think we all know how important internet safety is. And if not, I'm going to link you to some wonderful articles to read in the description because it is really important to keep yourself safe online. Just the same as it is really important to keep yourself safe in person. If you have friends from online communities, let me know how you guys met in the comments below. If you've met in person yet, let me know how that went too because that sounds flippin' amazing. I've met a couple of my online friends in person and it was just the best thing ever. Uh, and if you liked any of the fandoms I mentioned in the vid, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. I promise that my next video will be on a real camera and maybe there'll be something in the background. But, you know, deal with it. I hope you all have an amazing week. I'm going to be in a different house next time. So I will see you 30 k's from here. Bye!